glad to hear. So we have a lot of people watching, so welcome to the hundreds of people I guess nearly? No, not, not above 200, so but we're still quite a number. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna have a special, special showcase with our uh, new feature from Rizia, as well as the updated Rizia map and some new uh, content display after um, the coronation event from the last live stream. I'll reduce the uh, music while middle, so we'll work on the balance here. Perfect. Okay, let's slowly start uh, gearing up. see you all I mean <laughs> hear you and talk to you all I guess So yeah, what we're going to show today has actually been um, the result of a pretty long journey. <laughs> I'm really excited to share more about it, but it's nice to finally come to a point where we can kind of display it. Um, but before we get there, I'm going to show a few more new things and explain a little bit about the new design philosophy changes, as well as like some new reveals about the Rizzi experience. Um, Feel free to um, ask, ask questions in the chat, but um, since um, I don't have like a really specific Q&A flow today, um, I won't be able to answer a lot of them. I will sometimes skim through the chat and pick some stuff. So if I miss your question or cannot answer it, um, apologies. And I'll slowly switch to the game scene right now. Position myself on the left. Okay. We have 11 minutes to go, but until then, I'll slowly um, get started showing some new changes. So, I um, want to show a little bit about the map right now because <coughs> we really wanted to update this. Um, and we've shown some of the previous version on the Steam actually, um, I mean, certain cuts of it. Um, but yeah, this is um, Rizia, and we have a very different scale going on this time, so it kind of provides a very different experience, um, but it, it's much more cozy, it's much more compact, um, and we clearly see like the different uh, regions, I mean provinces in this experience as we call them. And um, as you can see, Rizia is actually a lot more developed um, compared to Swordland when it comes to the density and the amount of infrastructure it has. Um, we have also our new tokens that we worked on, um, which are trying to make this whole presentation beautiful. Uh, we have custom uh, art to tokens as well. I mean, our capital is, I mean, I, I just love the new tokens. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we got like some nice stuff going on. 
Yeah, and I've shown a bit of this before. Um, we have our um, different types of status effects, of course, for the Rizia experience, but some of the stuff is, of course, overlapping because the themes are uh, can be connected in government experiences, governmental experiences. Um, Rizia is a very different country, and I can actually, um, I mean, as you can see in the display here, um, we are a majority Ruizist country, um, and our capital is also like predominantly Ruizist, but we have other religious uh, communities here um, as well. And it's pretty diverse because this used to be a kingdom, an empire before that as well. Alright, I'll go around a little bit more. So um, this is the Velenkiris region. This is where the Taurus family actually uh, comes from. That's their home territory. Um, Monkeys is our basically capital and home, I would call. Um, we also have a custom token for this, um, which I think looks fantastic as well. And um, with Rizia and as well as 2.0, we actually upgraded a lot of the visual quality of our assets. Even the ones where there are just a bit more misc on the side. Um, you can tell that here from the, the new silhouette images. And as usual, um, we have our Codex articles. I mean, all the stuff you know from Suzerain. Um, the point is like we want to uh, kind of transfer everyone to a different experience here. Um, at the end of the day, we want to create a universe with different experiences in it, be it in Suzerain, be it in the Conformists, and be it in other games that we hope to make. Um, and in this experience, the Royal Experience, you know, our house, the Taurus family comes from this area. And of course we have control over the central uh, province, uh, Rizia and Peri. And um, there's also this city-state here called Isa. This is like an interesting case. Um, Isa is like a very specific uh, place and it's kind of like a special state that is within the Brennus region. And that's kind of like a unique thing that's happening here on the map as you can see. It kind of differs um, both the city name and the province city status here and actually there is actually even a uh, yeah here there is even a certain default policy about it here um, this is kind of historically so and there are some interesting things that happen in Isa in the game that we can explore later on I'll get the second screen to my right a bit better so I don't have to fully look away So, Valen is actually here, not far off, um, and uh, this territory here, which we call like Zeal, and there's like an agreement between the two nations that we've displayed in the prologue, um, but essentially um, this territory have, has been leased um, to Valen for certain, in return for certain security commitments. And that's part of the key big storyline elements here in Rizia that you'll discover. To our south, we have Morella. Um, Morella is a bit more, maybe you've uh, seen it in the 2.0 update where we kind of teased a bit of the lore of the upcoming changes and the new additions. Morella is a bit more of a uh, left leaning country, um, trying to like establish itself um, out of like a lot of um, colonial. Um, oppression and control, especially from Lesbia and some other nations. And we have Dirdia here. Um, and Dirdia is um, a very specific type of nation, a very unique type of nation. Uh, we're really excited to explore that more. You've also probably seen some content from them uh, in the 2.0 updates, um, where they can kind of congratulate you or condemn you based on their religious beliefs. Um, Dirdia is a Golconda's nation. Um, just like the Gludish people, some of them, in uh, Swordland. And there's like this interesting connection that happens between um, the different narratives there. Um, yep. And here is the Cardes Montaklar region. This is where House uh, Azaro is from. And Montaklar is their like main city. 
and the Azaros are the security military um, focused house in Rizia. They've held a lot of the defensive positions and military related positions. Um, they've also engulfed in some historical um, war incidents. We have also smaller areas um, here and there. And uh, yeah, this is close to the final version. There might be a few things that change on the map, but this kind of gives the feeling. And Brennus is uh, held by House Sazon, um, and Manus Sazon is their key uh, leader. And uh, the Sazons are like actually also a very important nation uh, element inside the nation. They have kind of led the democratic, um, quote unquote, democratic uprising. Could be debated in some areas, but they are a bit more of a uh, reform leaning house where that wanted to change the power structure back in the day. Um, and they've been punished for it. So um, that's also one of the reasons why we have a lot of control over, um, our family has control over Isa, for example. Um, Yes, so in three minutes we'll fully start. I'm gonna still keep going through a bit of the um, new changes. And um, this is where Palace is. And we have the Palace Administrative District. Um, this whole situation here is actually the result of a previous conflict that happened. Um, a war um, that has left kind of wound uh, in Rizia and directly affected our father and our uh, situation in the country. This is our cabinet and this is my, this is the most interesting uh, from like the new characters that I think is just really different approach than what we had. Um, there's like a religious figure inside the council uh, called Sal Ignatius. We've shared a picture about um, this uh, person before. We think that's a lot of different exploration that we're gonna delve into with the religion aspect in Rizia. Um, because we're a monarchy, religion plays a role as well as like Rizia is a Ruasis nation. So we're gonna have different types of um, elements of religion. In this area, um, we have this island that's a bit off the coast of Rizia. Um, it's called Kalekabiz, and I mean, the pronunciation don't uh, hold me accountable on that. <laughs> Might uh, be changing, but um, it's kind of like an island that Rizia has control over. It has a historical uh, past, actually, that we also explain in the lore. Um, the mother of House uh, Sazon's current leader, Duchess Angelica, uh, was exiled because of her events and her deeds that happened in the 20s to this island. So this is like an island where uh, one of the house's uh, family members are, are exiled in. It's a very strategic island that's actually connecting to Kairut and uh, it's right in between. So it's like a very important island. Um, in this area, here by the sea, um, we have more to share about this a bit later. But um, we have actually um, natural resources. Some of the elements are here. Um, they can be seen in, in token status effects later. So um, Rizia is a very resource, uh, I mean, was and still quite is a very resource uh, rich nation. But things are changing when the game uh, starts. And there will be a lot of ways to deal with those things. Also, one of the elements that um, is fairly new, and these numbers are subject to change, so <laughs> uh, don't take this uh, take this with a with a grain of salt because the numbers will change probably due to balancing and stuff. Um, but we have um, a very different thing that happens inside um, the Rizia experience compared to Suzerain. Um, we've actually added resources that have uh, different modifiers. This is a new feature as well. Uh, I mean, part of it is 
from a technical perspective, but the other part is from the game design perspective. Um, instead of having us just a pool, we also have uh, continuously incoming or also uh, reducing resources. So um, we can see that there is like impact from different like story choices or diplomatic choices and we use these elements to also like kind of balance the narrative a bit with the with the other game design elements that we know people get excited by but we also think it's a good opportunity um, as always with these things there's a challenge in our types of games you know specifically in suzerain and torpor games types of games to connect the narrative and the, and the gameplay well and we keep working on that we're going to push the boundaries but we're very happy to experiment further in this direction because we think that we can find some unique thing that other games uh, might not provide and that speaks to our experiences. Um, yes. So uh, Lesbia is up here, um, quite <laughs> large, and we will like change some object placements and stuff like that. And I'll just tease some of the objects here, but I won't go too far, because part of the new objects and collectibles are tied to certain main quests um, and like other story branches. So, um, so yeah, uh, the stuff we've seen in 2.0 basically. All right, it's 7:30, so we can fully start on the session. I hope you like the little uh, lore intro. So today we'll be showing um, a breakfast scene with the Taurus family um, and then our new uh, mechanic after that, after the session. The morning after my coronation, I was woken up by a knock on the door. It took me a few seconds to remember where I was. The royal bedroom, on the top floor of the residential wing of Palace Resna, made the one in the Taurus Palace in Monkeys look shabby. Ornate gold trim covered the walls. I was alone in a bed that could easily have slept for. The knocking on the door continued. Go away, I'm sleeping. <laughs> the door opened and Pavel gracefully stepped in. Pavel is our head butler um, and can be like a close childhood friend as well. Um, I mean, not childhood, I mean, close to childhood, I would say. But basically, um, one of the key characters in the new game, DLC. In the years I'd been gone, the groundskeeper's son had worked his way up to chief butler. I'd seen him on the visits to my palace, but we rarely exchanged words. Now he was the head of my royal household. You said you wanted to be woken up this time, Your Majesty. I don't want to start on this one. <laughs> but um, I'll say it's, a ni it's nice to see a familiar face. Pavel smiled. Likewise, I'm happy to serve you. He briskly drew back the heavy velvet curtains. Sunshine flooded the room. I trust you've slept well. Yeah, at this point in the story, uh, just like at the end of the prologue, our father passes away. Uh, and this is right after. So um, I'll say, I was thinking about father. Compassion appeared in his eyes. My condolences, your majesty. This must not be an easy time. He can't have been an easy man to serve, especially towards the end. Something dark passed across Pavel's face. He had his difficult moments, but I tried my best to make him comfortable in the last days. He moved over to my armory and began pulling out items of clothing. Why don't you join your family downstairs? I'll have your outfit ready by the time you've finished eating. Won't you eat with us? Pavel shook his head. I ate in the servants' quarters before coming here. Can you at least stop calling me your majesty? We don't need to be so formal. This is based on our previous jobs. Sorry, your majesty, but that would have been slightly disrespectful. Enjoy your breakfast. Still in my dressing gown, I headed downstairs. In the eastern dining room, an enormous breakfast spread had been laid out. My mother was already sitting at the table, digging a spoon into a single grapefruit half.
You're supposed to rise when the king enters the room. I gave birth to you, darling. I've earned the right to stay seated. <laughs> I mean, fair, fair point. Despite the early hour, my mother was already in her full makeup. She dabbed at her lips with a napkin. I hope you're satisfied with yesterday's coronation. Your father wasn't nearly as well attended. That's only because of the TV cameras. And yeah, Queen Estella, um, Queen Mother Estella is uh, our mother. And uh, actually very interesting, born into a fishing family uh, from Zill, moved to a Porto Drazon, and actually um, ended up meeting our father Valero, uh, which led to like a royal commoner relationship. Um, and yeah, it's a very, very interesting figure that we want to also kind of show. Um, yeah. Her eyes grew serious. Oh, don't sell, your, sell yourself short. What did he say to you before he died, by the way? I never asked. He told me to take back the lands that were lost. Zillan Palace, I suppose. He never did give up on the Grand Duchy. It's a pity he didn't live to preside over my homeland's big return to Rizia, but soon you will. Yes, the treaty expires in a year. Referencing Zill. I'm looking forward to that day. But don't let my nattering on keep you from eating. A king needs energy. She handed me a risetta, the traditional rice and quince custard tart. The crust was exceptionally flaky. It wouldn't be suzerain if we didn't have some delicious uh, food recipe from another area. <laughs> Just then, Vina came bounding down the stairs. This is our um, daughter, Princess Vina. Um, our passing, uh, our wife passed away in the prologue. There's a storyline about that I shared it in the previous live stream. Uh, so we have a daughter from that marriage. Isn't it a lovely morning? My daughter gave a kiss on the cheek to her, then me. I nearly got lost on the way here, Grandma. Why didn't you tell me this place had such a big library? Eat now, darling. She eagerly took a plate and started piling it high with pastries. My mother clicked her tongue disapprovingly. Not too many of those. The sweeter the taste, the wider the waste. Don't you agree, Romus? <laughs> Our mother has like a charm, obviously. Um, yes, uh, somebody asked, can you change how Taurus uh, Romus looks? Yes, you can there will be customization but um we might stick a bit closer to some uniform language um to not break out of the immersion i would say but the um some of the customization elements you see from suzerain will be there i'll also quickly go through the chat and um, find certain uh, interesting questions i can answer meanwhile Regarding any um, big stuff, I'll um, kind of talk about at the end. Um, all right, looks good. Um, all right. So we are answering to our mother. Absolutely, if you eat this much every morning, you'll never get married. <laughs> um, it's a special occasion. Our diet can start tomorrow. This is for all the procrastinators out there. Vina grinned, took a bite of a risetta, and gave an exaggerated sigh of pleasure. My mother rolled her eyes. Suit yourself. Now, if anyone in this place could make me a halfway decent strudel, that would be worth ruining one's figure for. We ate for a while in silence. Vina looked lost in thought. Finally, she spoke up. 
Father, I wanted to ask you something. You know that I'm 18 now. Yes, it's time you started taking on more responsibilities. I know, you've got to start thinking about where to study. You know, we're already behind on you finding uh, finding you a husband. Yes, and... That <laughs> this is... Uh, hmm. I would say... We gotta think about where she's gonna study. That's not quite what I had in mind. I was thinking, am I old enough to accompany you on your council meetings? It's unusual for a female heir to join the council, I know. But didn't you do the same when you were my age? <clears throat> yes, but I had to keep my mouth shut. Yes, but they were too dull to bear. Hmm. Well, 18 is certainly old enough to get involved in royal politics. And Liza the Great is a huge legacy for me to live up to. You shouldn't have to worry about living up to anyone's legacy. You're great in your own right. My grandmother's achievements were as noteworthy as everyone says. She just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Greatness is something you're born with, my daughter. You can't glean it off others. Let's go with one. That's very kind of you, Father, but Liza was the most beloved queen in our history. Of course, people will compare me to her. Getting ahead of yourself, sweetheart, the crown on your father's head, uh, head right now, not yours. She looked at me sharply. And what your father needs is for you, your lovely little face, to be seen at balls and ribbon cutting ceremonies, not hidden behind council doors. Um, so our mother is making like a traditionalist point nearly. Um, now, mother, we both know Wiener is much more than a pretty face. I do recognize my duty to, to represent Rizia in public, but I need to learn how to govern the country, not just represent it. Yeah, Wiener is our only heir. So I think there's a very different situation going on. Um, so I heavily uh, think that, you know, it's important to kind of think what happens with Wina. Uh, you want to spend the best years of your life cooped up in that den of snakes. The council isn't some wise, all-knowing entity. Everyone in it is just looking after their own house and their own stature. And God help you if you get in the way of either of those. <laughs> I think this would also shoot back at us. <laughs> um, yeah, my counselors represent many cumulative decades of experience. I would not discount their wisdom. Their wisdom turned pal Palais into a bloodbath and sparked an uprising. It almost got you killed. I don't know if the uprising was the council's fault. From what I've heard, there were many factors. And besides, if choosing when to ignore the council will be part of my future duties, I need to learn how to do that too. I promise it will be like I'm not even there and I'll step out in public as much as I can. Mina looked at me with pleading eyes. Hmm. Yes, your grandmother's just jealous, Vina. You can join in the meetings if you want. My daughter's face lit up. Thank you. I can't wait to start. Oh, I'd better refresh myself of Rizian law. She pushed her plate away and dashed back upstairs. While she was gone, my mother lit a cigarette. You do realize that she'll be nothing but a liability to you in that room. She's the heir apparent. It will be good education for her. I hope you're right. The clock struck quarter to nine. My first council meeting was starting soon. I excused myself from the table. As I was leaving the dining room, my mother cleared her throat. He always believed you'd make a good king, you know, even if he didn't always show it. Thanks for saying that. 
I headed back upstairs to fetch Wiener. It was almost time to go. So, um, that was a nice moment with our family, um, our new uh, family in the Rizzi experience. Um, for us, like having the personal touch, having a family is key to all of our experiences because we think that it really connects everything from an emotional perspective beyond all the power play and the politics that you experience. Exceptional wine year. Our cousin is at it again, I guess. All right. Oh, we have a coronation celebration um, decision. We'll go with a, like a large party. So, um, I guess it's slowly time. And I'll give you a bit of context about everything here. Um, so thanks for watching until now. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, yes, so we're right now, just for the presentation purposes, gonna jump to a point in the game where something will happen. Um, we don't want to spoil the exact narrative around it and all the things, um, but of course, by the presentation, some things will be cleared up. But I want to underline, we have um, branching content as always, and we have different paths to engage with our stories. So this is not the only path, and this is just a part in it. Um, and yeah, so then we can slowly head into our new game mechanic. <laughs> um, we've been talking about uh, this a lot uh, internally for the past, like I would say eight, nine months. Um, and we wanted to build something that kind of brings in new elements into the game experience without disrupting the whole like core. And welcome to our war mechanic. So um, it's, still work in progress I'll uh, adjust the setup right now because some of the stuff is um, in the layout different Okay, so um, here on the left we have our deployment menu. We can actually um, deploy different types of units. Um, and our, one of the key elements that we are working on is to make sure that this experience is a big additive on top of the core story and the elements. It's, so it's not its completely detached thing. Um, it just kind of enhances the experience but by itself it also provides something that the core storyline cannot provide um, so our one of the things that we work on a lot right now is to connect and make sure everything is like linked up pretty well between um, the main and this part so um, we can go with our council of counselor of wars plan or we can do our own deployments we have different types of resources here um, and these are, of course, for the presentation sake right now, not final. That's why we have work in progress at the bottom right. Um, but we'll start with kind of analyzing a bit of the mechanic here and what it does. Um, but the overall idea is that you would be jumping into sections of this, have, doing multiple turns and rounds, and then completing that section and then leaving this part and going back to the main experience. Um, and the two will be connected through story and other elements like resources and values and other stuff. So um, as you can see here, we have uh, supply lines, uh, we have enemy units, and essentially here we have their different stats that you can see. We have um, certain terrain types. We have our towns and um, cities. These are like our primary objectives that we need to capture. We have different forts, other status effects, and you can see like the supply lines are continuing here. 
And this is another city of ours, the defensive fort. So this is roughly the outline. And as you can visually tell, we have different types of units that have different advantages and disadvantages that get impacted by different terrains. Um, one of the philosophies that we wanted to have is have a balance between something that's a bit more open, but something that also feels a little bit like a puzzle. Um, so let's start with deploying our units. I'll go with my own deployment, so um, it heavily changes based on how you deploy, which is nice. Um, so let's start deploying with our tank here. one support and these values are not final just as a reminder <laughs> we'll put our mountaineers on our mountain province and the mountaineers have a special bonus on mountain tiles so they're actually very highly valuable um, and sometimes certain units uh, how much you have them available or not will be affected by main game choices so things are not going to be fully disconnected um, there will be elements that influence things back and forth. All right, so we'll go with some infantry. I'll go with some infantry here. I'll go with an armor here. We already have like an advanced fort. Put an infantry here. We'll put some support units behind them. And I'll kind of lay more infantry on our northern border. We have good forts here, and this is like our level 1 fort, this is our level 2 fort. These things will also be influenced by other things in the story, so um, we're really working a lot to make sure it's really interesting. Um, yes. So, we have a few more resources left. Um, I'll definitely deploy our fleet. on the north we're a bit weaker so it might be best to put a tank here somewhere one tank and we have a support here that can support these two units um, okay let's put it on this side so okay now we run out of all the resources so we're not gonna deploy other types of units in this presentation but there are some interesting things uh, that you can see here um, but I won't focus on that part <laughs> and um, yes I think that's it for now um, so we can press done and I'm gonna re-switch the webcam because the layout is gonna change yes I'm sure. So, um, we've deployed our units, kind of like come up with a strategy here. I've only deployed one Mountaineer, I think that should be enough. And I'll switch the, actually, the positioning might be okay. Yeah, it is okay. Top left is empty, so that works. Um, yes, so okay, uh, we have action points. So every turn we have multiple action points, and these action points, as you'll see, um, can be used by moving, moving, uh, fortifying, bombing, like airstrikes, um, and supporting other units. So the key thing here, um, and I'll go a bit uh, over a bit of the resources. So here we have four different types of resources. Um, the key element that we have and I think this is something that makes this mechanic really unique, is um, support. Um, so we have the core uh, health, attack, and defense, roughly, of the values. Um, but support is something that I think we've expanded on that makes it quite unique. Um, so combat functions in a very interesting way here. Uh, we can also fortify on the selected units. So um, looking at the operation, Let's decide on where we act first. I, ca I can uh, reduce the game volume a little bit. Right, there we go. 
Um, so, where should we start our operation? <laughs> I guess we can start here from the coast. We have like a good network of units here. We can push on the mountain. So we have stronger defense here. So this unit would have like seven defense right now. Um, so they're quite well off already. But they have no other support unit that could like help them out. <coughs> uh, except this one. So I think like there is a weakness definitely here. Um, that we can back up with these units. But if this unit gets attacked and this gets attacked and they overwhelm it, then that would be problematic. So I would fortify one of these. So I'm going to actually fortify this unit. So we fortify that one. And I would actually begin the attack here. So we've initiated an attack. So we've used two action points right now. Um, so as soon as like an attack starts, you can see here, um, we have the total values of the engagement. And you can see here how the adjacent units are supporting the different types of um, engagements that happen with the main initiating unit. So um, we have a fleet here that gives five support and we have a minus six differential here and we have two action points. This unit gives plus three support, this gives plus five support. So if we commit to this area, we won't have any other action points left for this entire turn. Um, but right now, if we just leave this be, we're gonna lose <coughs> because our unit won't be able to stand. Um, bombing also uses an action, uh, airstrikes also use an action point. So um, there's that thing of, okay, that's also like a thing that we spent. And there are these anti-air um, tiles that prevent you from bombing and the adjacent tiles can't be bombed as well. So you have an incentive to capture these um, to be able to bomb adjacent tiles. So, okay. I will um, support this engagement, so our difference is minus one right now, and I will actually push the support unit in as well. So we just switched from losing to winning with a minus two attack on the enemy. All right, so, so far, any questions? Right now we've made four actions um, in our first turn. Um, we fortified our northern units, we deployed here, but we mainly are attacking from the coast here on the supply line. As you can see, the engagement is also like animated. Um, you can airstrike tiles that have units on them right now. The four stats are support, kind of like the health, attack, and defensive value. Uh, we will have like a simplified tutorial so you can actually kind of engage with this before the storyline kicks in. That's what we're gonna work on as well. Um, this is specifically the palace uh, war that we're uh, designing this for. So um, that kind of reveals like part of the storyline that it can go down to. Um, and our philosophy behind building something like this is first off to enhance the experience and the ideas we've built around Rizia, but also eventually if you know other opportunities come and we can actually execute them we want to use this system uh, for other things but for now we just want to make sure it works here it works great in this uh, scope and with this focus on Rizia and then we'll see uh, of where we can take this stuff. All right, um, I guess then we can go to the next turn. Resilient sabotage and Polygian ranks, a spectacular covert operation within the fortified enemy territories west of Zeke's resulted in crippling of a crucial Polygian division. 
Our intelligence operators not only sabotage key communications relay, but also instigated defections among several Polynesian officers. This double blow not only disbands a significant chunk of their force, but also provides us with an invaluable initiative. It's all right, our intel kind of destroyed uh, and like led this unit to destruction here. And there are a couple of things that happened. So the enemy has bombed our fleet, which kill our support of this engagement. So our unit is uh, bombed and unable to kind of act further. Uh, the enemy initiated an attack on the mountainous western provinces um, and they are actually winning. And there's a heavy bonus here as you can see from the mountaineer units. They have special support uh, potentials here on the right side you can see um, that uh, their total stat stats are here. Um, and they can like much better support from mountain tiles. Um, and we've been also attacked here on the on this side. Um, the enemy initiated quite a strong attack, even though we have the big city de the defense. This unit is in a fortified position. This unit is one tile away to support. So we really need to think about this carefully because we don't want to lose this side and actually lose this town. Uh, losing your own key um, main supply points actually have a big impact in this operation as well as like you got to make sure that your cities are still in your hands while you're capturing enemy cities so there's a lot of like balancing going on of like defending well and attacking well and calculating how to advance and there will always be something you can do so there won't be situations where there's nothing you can do um, and we want to make sure the story kind of aids you so you never feel like you know the mechanic guides the entire story. The, st the mechanic is supposed to be interesting, but still intertwined with all interesting story choices that, you know, if something doesn't work in the mechanic, there will be other ways around stuff. So we will make sure that, you know, you won't be uh, heavily punished for making a small mistake here or something. Um, but as with our games, it, will, it won't be easy as well. Like we will make it difficult. <laughs> you know, that's kind of, I think, established by now how difficult Suzerain is. Um, Rizia will hopefully be at the same level maybe slightly easier i don't know we'll see how it turns out um all right so the supply points help re re regenerate the um organization of the unit the quote-unquote health um so on a supply node you actually heal much faster and certain hurt units fall back um, and if they fall back to a tile that has supplies, they heal back much faster. So we have to decide. <laughs> so we have a couple of things. So like this coastal thing got pushed. Um, we definitely have problem here. But um, with a plus three defense, we can actually neutralize this. Um, another thing we can do is we can go on the offensive and knock this tile uh, from both sides with the mountaineer leading the charge because they are specialized in mountain terrain it's an interesting proposition uh, we hope to always have maximum immersion that's our goal like um, we want the players to be fully immersed in the character as much as possible and give as many um, role playing choices as possible given the resources we have Um, yes, replayability is something we designed from the start with this DLC. Although it is like a smaller scope compared to Suzerain, it actually was designed thinking about replayability from the very start. Um, and this mechanic is actually also super replayable. Um, I did three different deployments and actually everything reacted quite differently and something I think shows that it's good design. Of course, you know, we want everybody's judgment on that from the community to actually be able to say that that it ended up being successful um, but from what we're seeing it's really promising as well as the other choices like in the royal decrees or decisions and the storylines we are actually going for a lot more different paths and replayability within this experience um, in a very different way as well so it won't be just like suzerain it will be different um, that's uh, that's the focus right now all right so 
we have to make the decision. <laughs> um, turn two. Um, so there are two actions I'm really considering here. One is equalizing this engagement by starting a new engagement here. We can keep pushing from the coast, um, which might get us to the next node and unlock like a deeper attack towards the other city or bypassing here. I mean, we still have mountain tiles, so we need mountaineers. Um, okay. This one too. So for supporting this, we need to move two tiles. So one action and an engagement, that's two actions. And the support will only be two. So that won't save us. We can use the airstrike and knock out three. Maybe. Let's see. No, I can't hit this. It's protected from airstrikes. So yeah, this won't work. We can't hit these. We can hit this, but that will only like knock out plus one. There will be uh, other types of governmental meetings, uh, but there will be a, like a strong focus on diplomacy um, and dealing with other nations and other leaders. We can also like attack stuff here, but I don't think it contributes much. So, yeah. So yeah, this will be a tough sacrifice. Um, if we navigate these past here, we can improve our positioning. Um, Yeah, that's a tough one. I'm also really focused here, so I'm just gonna act here and I'm gonna knock this um, attack out. Hope that neutralizes so they can't push further. But we need to capture this because it has this anti-air and that's blocking all the bombing availability here. That restricts us quite a bit. So okay, let's make our action then. So we're taking our Mountaineer, hitting this. Western approach of the Aledo Mountains. The Aledo Mountains Western approach has become a strategic focal point for both the region and Polynesian forces. The enemy's artillery dug into the mountain sides as a dominating view over the valleys and fields. Capture this area would allow us to dictate turns in a larger theater. How should we proceed? If we have airborne ops, we can deploy a regiment of paratroopers. We can do a sustained artillery barrage, or we can just head on assault. Um, manpower will be um, a resource in the, in the war experience, and it will also be heavily connected to the laws at, in the main game. So um, you can certainly spend certain types of... Um, military resources you have in certain actions here so we're ensuring that the, the gameplay is connected so let's go with the artillery barrage okay so that knocked that out um, so this unit is getting minus one which means that we will win this engagement and they will be disadvantaged so we can take this area right after uh, we have an empty tile here that we can move into to get close to the city. Um, this city gives plus five defense and plus one organization per turn. So um, it's also like one of our main objectives. But as you can see, it's very, very well defended and it has like this challenge going on. Um, so uh, the strategic win, uh, we got to make sure if we move in here, we have to like hold this fort because it's very advantageous. Otherwise, the enemy will move in. Um, so we have to really think about this if it would be worth it. Um, this engagement, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of worried about this. I feel like we're gonna we're gonna suffer a bit here uh, by going down a bit south. So um, it's gonna be tough. Um, other nations and other diplomatic situations will interact with everything you see here from a strategic perspective. So we're really trying to create this experience where like the international arena will still trying to have effects and continue to have impact here um, so that's what I mean by having this connected experience right we don't want to create like a separate thing that's completely on its own um, the key thing is whatever you do in the story affects here some of the things that affect uh, that happen here affects the main story all right so we can push further down here we're still bombed with the so they would have like plus two. We have the support from the Mountaineers, so I think we have an advantage. So I'm just gonna go on the offensive here. So they're attacking. We have a minus three difference. We can actually neutralize that. We can bomb this unit directly, but that won't do the trick. 
Um, let's uh, put our fleet into the support. Um, it's plus five supporting the engagement now, so we have we're winning this combat, uh, this this battle. Um, we're also winning here, so we have one action point left, um, which I'm going to. Okay, if I move here, this unit can move here. Do I take the risk? I mean, at least we'll get closer to the city and we would have this northern angle here from this province covered. Um, uh, this is a risk. Or we could move one unit here and support this once it loses and it can fall back somewhere else. I guess we have to make sacrifices, so I'm just gonna sacrifice this unit. There is, there is not much we can do there. <laughs> so, okay, let's go with the tank. And that is it for our action points this turn. Let's... All right, so we attack back. Of course, that unit lost um, V1 here. So quite strong. Um, okay, the enemy attacked in the Zix area. So they have a minus four advantage on us. This can give plus three support. We have an infantry here that can give plus one. Um, we can even bomb maybe some of the strong units here. No. See, like the this tile, specifically with its anti-air, is really crippling our ability to support uh, bombing runs. So that's definitely why uh, capturing certain tiles really changes the way you play, which makes this whole thing really interesting. All right. Um, so the enemy is weakened here, so we can keep pushing on the coast as well. Um, and the situation here is not great, to be fair. Uh, so, uh, but they cannot, um, they have to attack the city. And there's plus five defense here, so to move forward, or they can still hit my unit. I guess I will move my support unit up to support these two. That's the first move. Um, hmm. This is bad here. Even if I move this, that's like plus three. Hmm. It's a tough one. Yeah. The war won't last forever. You will have a certain amount of time to achieve the objectives. And there's a lot you can do within that time. Uh, so the design is that you'll be able to get into this experience um, every once in a while. That kind of like works with the story. So uh, you'll have certain actions in that fragment and that section. And then um, you'll get out of it again. Um, okay, so we have a challenge here. So we could use two action points to neutralize this attack. Actually three, it would be three action points. This unit would move, would support. I think it's the right thing because we have a good fort here. So we don't want to like leave openings um, for the enemy. So I'm gonna move actually this week up. That's one action point. So at least like the entire, we have a front covered. And I will actually start an engagement here. Um, and we have one more action point. Um, so these units are supporting this engagement. If I would attack this, that would knock out three as well. There, These two attacks supporting this engagement would be the same. Um, yeah, sorry guys, I'm super focused on the game. <laughs> it's actually like engaging because there's a lot of thinking behind it. So, um, oh yeah, the question. So, um, the, yeah, the, the entire side is really important, this one. Um, so it might be good to just take this out to unleash like a bit more of a better operational area here. Um, yeah. <coughs> it's tough, this one. 
but I do want to take a little bit of a risk down here as well. Um, all right. I think uh, I want to support this. Yeah, I'll support this. It's okay. We'll support the coastal battle. Okay, this is gonna hurt. So you'll see how uh, what happens when it actually. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Okay, so this engagement concluded. They destroyed our tank. Um, but we moved them to the coast. Refugees in battle space. As the relentless war is on the outskirts of Limanovit, there's a massive influx of desperate civilians fleeing from the conflict zones. Their distraught faces and stories of mortar bombardment, straight runs, and entrenched posi positions evoke. Pointing tales of the horrors of war. These refugees, although non combatants, are now within the operational theater of the Rosian armed forces. Um, their movement disrupts the supply lines, potentially exposing vulnerabilities in the field of battle, which shall be the course of our action. Um, I think the right thing to do, um, since Palasians are also like. We have a common history and you know if we aim to um, take over i think there should be uh we should set up refugee camps behind the lines for shelter and care uh, which costs us budget so we spent a bit there um the enemy moved one motorized uh, sorry uh, support unit here and we have the advantage at the coast um, but we, have, we lost one of our tanks here, so definitely that tank division is going to hurt because um, we have a weakness here. But we have to deal with this entire tile. There's no further pushes here, so the enemy fleet is positioned there. Um, hmm. I guess we have to just take this, so let's go with oh they were overrun they were low health so okay we got the tile so now, now we can actually bombard um, these positions which is super useful there's nothing here so we can't bombard it yeah they uh this is the power of the Rizian units they just got like they looked at it <laughs> i mean they lost all the health from the previous engagement um i actually sh just could have just moved in there um Okay, so we have three more action points left. I guess we have a good opening here towards the city, if you see what I'm seeing. Um, but moving here would take some time, and this unit with this fort still creates some issues. Um, so what we can do is actually deploy upwards. Move this infantry here. Oh, okay, there. Okay, the mountain province here is important mountain tile we shouldn't leave that without the mountaineer um, there's a gap in the line actually if we don't move could rotate these units from here can we win this engagement actually they have plus four defense here because of the fort it's gonna be tough But we can knock it out with the air attack, which we haven't shown yet. So, or also bomb the city. So the city gives plus five defense. Um, could be useful to hit the city now and then start this offensive. Let's see, okay, so let's... Let's start the attack. So, okay, we have a minus three, um, which we can probably overwhelm with two action points. Would bombing the city help in this case? I mean, we can directly bomb the unit as well. Maybe bombing the unit makes more sense, actually. What do you all say? All right, this is interesting. Um, 
choices. The supporting unit gives um, only plus one. So their defense is four, and this is the fifth one. Um, so if we bomb this, I think we win. <laughs> the Okay, we're bombing a unit. Okay, so now they're losing. Okay, so this gives us one more action to move on. I would say... I don't want to leave this tile. So let's try to do a breakthrough through here with this. Oh, we could also move that up. Yeah, they're not going to move there. Got a good support thing. I mean, there is an opening here as well that we could have taken, but... Okay, let's just move this support unit up here so we have, like, a um, good support structure. So we will play one more turn, and that will be uh, most of the showcase for today. But let's make it count. Okay, so they've initiated here. It's good that we got the support vehicle, but it might not be enough. They're pushing on this side, okay. They, they, did, they did go for it. Um, uh, the capital of Palais is here. Let's see here. And currently we're in the Operation 1 area, and I won't tell about the rest, um, but this is only a part of it, basically. <laughs> um, okay, so we got another push here, so it's not over. And we got another push here. So the thing is, yeah, we cannot support this because it's not adjacent and they have their unit blocking us here. So we're in a bad position in this, in this corner. Um, and this one also didn't work out. They kind of re-attacked after the bombing effect subsided. So what we can do is knock if knock this combatant out, which would reduce to minus four. Ah, oh, we don't have any bombing runs left, so we can't actually bomb in this section anymore. Um, which is also something you can change in the story. Um, so I would say, I want to focus here because we've lost the unit here. I think this deserves attention. So um, we can move this support unit here and support it. That would give plus three. So I think that would be a good way to move. So let's do that. All right, plus two. And I guess that's the best shot we got. Yes, so now we're winning this engagement here. Um, yeah, it's important that we have that approach covered. So about this, it's a tough one. It's we e we remove like the damage. That's the only th shot we have here. So I would focus on our mountaineers. Um, yes, they uh, mountaineers have no penalties in mountain combat, and as you can see, there are mountain uh, tiles here. So I'll just hit this one. Okay, and that kind of sums up everything. I'm just gonna go to the next turn and we're gonna slowly start wrapping up. We got the engagement there, we lost our tank here, um, and they've pushed here on the northeastern side. Um, so quite a challenging <laughs> position that we're in right now. Um, because our town is being encircled, our city. And Fort Ellis is one of the key places, so um, definitely something we need. And there will be reinforcements um, in the story that we can call in based on other things that happen. Uh, all right. I guess we're gonna leave it here. I really hope you enjoyed the showcase and the new lore and the new map and other stuff, as well as the new modifiers. Um, there are still a lot of different things to reveal, uh, one of which which I'm going to keep uh, for the next stream on December 4th. And uh, it's going to be really exciting. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah. And if you have any questions, uh, please drop it in the, in the chat. Uh, we can like look over that stuff right now. 
and while that is happening I'll actually change my scene layouts in OBS. So um, regarding anything about release dates, we will keep informed. Um, we're, we definitely have some plans regarding that, so hold on tight. Please wishlist the Rizia DLC. Um, helps us a lot in uh, seeing the support and the attention and the interest. So um, drop by Steam and um, add it to your wish lists. And um, about the mechanic, um, for now it's going to be Rizia focused. And we'll talk about the future once we get there. Um, regarding campaign length, that's a good question. Um, it's definitely not going to be as long as Suzerain because it's a DLC, as we've said. And we're also going to talk about the price point of the DLC as well on December 4th. So uh, keep an eye on that stream. Um, yeah. Uh, about mobile, we'll be tackling mobile after Rizia launches. So also keep an eye on that. Yes, so we have some things that affect this. Um, I saw one of the questions came in. And the question from the Dutch Ministry, which is a funny name uh, for the stream. Um, yes, you can. But um, it's, it's interestingly complicated and complex. So uh, we won't reveal much and spoil. Um, so um, regarding the transition of the government types, we will have certain elements that lead up to certain changes in the country, um, but it's not as big of a focus as the constitutional reforms was in Suzerain. Um, it's definitely something that's there, but our focus is really a lot about the geopolitics and the, the political intrigue around the houses. Um, those things will have a place. It's just that we have to focus our attention to make um, a very uh, unique and different experience. That's our strategy behind the DLCs. We really want to bring something fresh and unique that still somewhat feels familiar every time. Um, Tarkin Soul will not be present in this experience. <laughs> and I know a lot of people will be saddened by that, but um, we might not meet him in a washroom somewhere. But there will be other characters that you will be seeing from Suzerain so, and Swordland. So uh, it's going to be exciting. And the uh, comedian is going to be around for sure. <laughs> a good, good. Uh, we already actually teased some of the characters that could be in Rizia in the 2.0 update. But there will be some surprises as well that we were going to show. Um, in Rizia, there's going to be three newspapers primarily. Um, and um, the voice of Rizia is actually something that we as the king can uh, work on because like uh, media is actually completely state controlled in Rizia by law. Um, it's something you can change. And geopolitical represents the international news, uh, which has regional biases and sometimes um, has opinions too. Um, a lot of people take geopolitical as fact, but geopolitical also has biases, like some biases here and there. Um, yeah, but this is uh, the main uh, thing here because we really have a very different experience here. We didn't want to focus a lot on the on the newspaper side, except for state opposition, international news. All right, um, I think that kind of wraps it up. So thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for watching. Um, I really hope whatever you see is interesting. Uh, we had a lot of fun working on this. Um, started as an idea, became a concept, became a prototype. And I think it's getting really close to the uh, final result here. So um, thanks for joining. Have a good uh, rest of the day and see you on the next live stream. And wishless Rizia, don't forget. Take care.